Now my Hari Mai and welcome everybody along to this monthly pro presentation from the New Zealand Society of Genealogists. I'm Sarah Hewitt and tonight we're going to look at what's new on our website. So I am going to take a moment to share my screen. This is the screen you get when you log into the website. It's your dashboard. And so the first thing I wanted to look at tonight was the new forum that we've launched. And you need to kind of activate the forum. So I thought I'd start here because when you log in, this is where you get to. And it is from here that you can um, manage your account and add the forum in. So if we go over onto the right hand side, you'll see the manage button here. Click on it. And then it is my details. And over on here on the right hand side, you'll see a little tab that says social. We're just going to click on that. And once you've done that, you can put a name in. Now, one thing I've discovered looking at the forum is it doesn't really matter what your name is because it will have your actual name underneath it. So, you know, you could put in something humorous if you wanted to. Or if, you know, your name is John Smith, you might like to put, <clears throat> I don't know, John from Hamilton or something that differentiates you from all the other John Smiths. Um, and the forums you're interested in, um, at the moment we only have one. So it is the DNA forum. And then click update and it will do that for you. And if we scroll down a little bit, we have what is called social ranks on this. Now we didn't get an instruction manual with the forum, so we're kind of learning about it as, as we go along. So, um, you will need to bear with us if, if we don't really understand how things work because we don't entirely just yet. Now to actually get into the forum, if you go up from the top, if you've gone through this process for the first time, you can come to get involved, scroll down the list to the bottom and then click on the forum. And you see you have the option there for your own posts. So just looking into it, you have the option to search the forum and one of our members did actually put a post on here about the forum settings and how the forum works at present. So thanks to Alan, who um, has put in a, a, a chain there that you can read. Somebody, of course, has <clears throat> put some notes in about the My Heritage Theory of Family Relativity update, which they do periodically. It's their equivalent of through lines. And we have a nice comment from Kim, Kevin saying that he'd rather not use Facebook, which is the reason we put this forum together in the first place, is that we did, we knew that many of our members don't like Facebook or and this was kind of the best option out there. So currently we only have DNA as an option on the forum. We are looking into what other things you might like to have as, as topics on there, but we're kind of waiting to see how the forum goes for starters. So I don't know if any of you have actually used the forum that are with us tonight. Leaving a blank space there to see if anybody wants to pipe up and say anything. I've joined. <laughs> Yay, good. Thank you, Tricia. <clears throat> I've joined as well. <laughs> good. So, you know, you don't lose it, you know, it's nothing extra <laughs> if you join it, you just see what happens. But if you've got any suggestions on what you might like to see in the forum, um, do get in touch with me and um, we'll look at what people want because that's really what we're here for, to give you what you'd like. Now, I'm going to move on from the forum. One of the big things that's really new on the website is the Kiwi resources, but I'm going to take a little slight detour into the overseas resources because we've added a little bit of information in here. Now, we already have all these countries, oops, all these countries here, and under other countries, we've added a few bit more information. So we've put in some things for Canada, and to be honest, the Library and Archives of Canada seems to be a number one place to go and, and look for various things. We also added in some information on China, and I spoke about that at the last monthly presentation because I'd had a chat from uh, one of the members of the New Zealand Chinese Poll Tax Heritage Trust. So those are some resources that she um, pointed out to me. Um, somebody was asking 
in the last couple of days about South Africa on the MEM list, which is our other way of getting help. Um, we have a few links, but um, if anybody's got any more that they'd like to send through, that'd be really helpful because South Africa has, is one of those countries that has a bit of a reputation for being a bit difficult. Now let's move back to New Zealand. Now you'll notice that down here on the side of the overseas resources, you have the drop down list, which means you can scoot around things. And when you click on the Kiwi resources, you don't have that. It can be a little bit confusing, but the reason we don't have that is because we're currently up to 22 pages on the Kiwi resources, which is all of these. And I've just fitted them neatly onto the screen. Um, so of course, if that's all on a side menu means it's on the big menu. And that means when you're on a device like my laptop, you can't actually see the bottom of the menu because it disappears off down the bottom of the screen. So we have to always be a bit aware about how long our menus are. We have a lot of things in here. So we had some items recently on the uh, New Zealand Government Gazette. So if we click onto the government page, it's got some interesting resources. I always recommend looking in the A to J's, the appendices to the journals of the House of Representatives. They're on papers past. Um, there's interesting things in there. The reports can be quite interesting. I even found one written by a great great grandmother on Burnham Industrial School, which was fascinating just from her talking about what they hoped to achieve and how they ran the place and whether what they thought and what they did were two things I do not know, but um, it was an interesting insight to the thinking of the times. But if we scroll down here, we've got a new section now on the New Zealand Gazette and the whole list of different places where you can find them. Um, some of them you'll note are over, overlapping. And one of the cool things we discovered in the process of all of this is that there's five years that are missing in the early years. We actually have hard copies of those in the library. So uh, that's really cool to know. And also we have the searchable version in the library. So that was one of the big things that sort of started this whole thing up was that the searchable version had disappeared off the internet. Um, but we actually do have... Um, a copy of that database. So if you need someone to do a look up on the New Zealand Gazette, flick off a message to research services and they'll have a look at you. And I know Maud mentioned in the ACAT last month the New Zealand yearbook. Those are fascinating things. Um, you know, you can find out how many sheep were exported for a particular year <laughs> and all sorts of other things. And of course, inflation calculators are always useful. But if we go back, one of the other things I, I had a play around with this week is that we're about to have Labor Day, a holiday after the school holidays. And so we have quite a big section here on work records. So Jen very kindly and very quickly added in a new section on labor history. So um, I have to say from having a, a quick look around, the National Library has a lot of resources. But if you have people who are in the union movement, you might be looking to find out more detail about what they got up to. Um, if they were in the Labour Party, of course, because that came out of the Labour movement. And you may be looking more at the, the other side of the, of the mix, which is the, the, <clears throat> the company's side of things. So some companies, which are still sort of running, have their own archive and their own uh, website that talks about it. But, um, you know, finding a company history or biography, it can be quite interesting. My mum's got one of um, Turnbull and Jones that my granddad was managing director of. And I just find it quite funny the way he's written about in there. <laughs> he was quite autocratic and saw the board as a rubber stamping exercise. So we're quite lucky that Julie and our manager doesn't view our board quite like that. But um, something to aspire to if I'm ever the general manager of something. And of course, there's other resources on here. So if you've got anything you want to add, please flick it to the email education at genealogy.org.nz. Um, I will just go and remind you, of course, the presentations. We have the monthly ones here, um, which I edit. I try to do it quite quickly and then um, it goes up on the website. And we've also been adding those little videos into other places. So if you, for example, go and oops, you know, overseas resources, see what I mean about the menus disappearing down the page. Um, 
if we click on go on newspapers you can see there's now a little video so that's just a that part of the presentation i did a few months ago talking about how to navigate around the um, gal newspapers so you can watch that here and then you can get into it <clears throat> so i'm going to well i'll stop sharing my screen for the moment but if anybody's got any questions or if there's anything they'd like to know more about or something they think we have on our website but they can't find um, do pipe up and uh, we'll see how we go No? Are, you, are you hoping we're going to say something, Sarah? I am very hopeful somebody is going to say something. You, you're doing well. Keep going. <laughs> I ask, is there a link to the um, births, deaths and marriages um, catalogue that NZSG holds? Um, no, because you, uh, you mean the certificates collection or are you talking about what we might hold at the library? Certificates collection. That's on the Kiwi collection. Okay. If you go into collections, when you're logged in, of course, you won't see this. And where are we going? Certificates. Oh. On here, it will give you instructions on how you can request if you don't have access to the um, Kiwi collection. So there's a full index of people on the certificates on the Kiwi collection, but otherwise there's um, you can just make a request by clicking on the button and filling in the form. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Cool. I noticed also there are obituaries there in that list. Um, are they derived from newspapers, like papers past? Uh, yeah, the, the, the obituaries collection is more modern than that. So we collect current newspapers. So we might have obituaries that um, you know are from more recent years. I know we um, one of the collections on the Kiwi collection is the and Melanie. You're gonna have to remember the name, the New Zealand Herald one. Um, I can't so, remember what years that went up to. So New Zealand Herald was death notices, um, but obituaries basically cover any publication that has written something where some. Thing has been written about something after they've died. So they come from newspapers, magazines, um, they come from um, uh, various journals such as, uh, I, I'm trying to ours. think of exactly. <laughs> uh, so, well, yeah, from ours, <laughs> but also, um, you know, there's like um, the Bird Society, um, military journals, uh, any anywhere we have, um, you know, a, an obituary has been published about someone. Um, they're sent in to us very often by members. We get hundreds in each week from members. Um, and we have certain members around the country who read particular publications and send in um, any they find. So the the number of places they come from is huge. And And of course, from papers past. Okay. Any more questions on the collections? We we have a few of them. Right. I'm going to stop sharing my screen again. Are there any other questions, comments, suggestions? Um, it's Karen. Uh, just a quick question: uh, Is the past issues of the New Zealand Genealogist indexed at all in the collections? That's on the Kiwi collection. The index. Um, I'm not sure if it's anywhere else. Jen, do you know if we've got it anywhere else? Um, Sorry, on the my Kiwi technology's playing up. Yeah, I, I think uh -huh. on the um, digital issues page, there's a link to some indexes. Not sure yeah. how recent. I uh, can't recall. But. I'm just trying to think because I subscribe to the Kiwi collection. I never 
actually notice too hard what's included on the member side and what's not, which is a bit naughty because I should know. Um, but uh, yeah, but as Jan says, there is a um, yeah, an index. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and the index is paid. So it goes up down to 2022. So I don't think it's been done since then. Yeah. I think we have someone who does it once a year. Bruce used to. Oh, there might be someone else now. Yeah. I don't you know, and 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 does it now, so right. yeah. we can. Um, I can send you that, Jan. Right. Uh, in about four weeks' time okay. to get updated. Oh. Remind me. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, there are there are indexes. Go go up from the digital magazines page. Yeah. As well as on the Kiwi collection. Yeah. So yeah, for members. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Any other questions? Um, actually, can I just go back to that question? Yeah. Because um, Jan, just um, you know, on the front page of the website now, we have that. You know, you can Google search. Um, can we Google search through to? NZG, uh, New Zealand Genealogist, or will that only go through to the website? I think only to the website. So I think the but, website is set up so that PDFs don't get indexed for Google. Right. I but think. It was just a random thought that, yes. you know, maybe there's a way to, um, you know. Of course, if if you have, um, a, a you know, PDF, an advanced PDF, you can open a PDF and search for words in that, but oh. yeah. Yeah, well, the, the more recent ones, because they've been done in Publisher, you know, you can just do Control F once you've got it open to find things. But of course, that means you have to go into each issue. Yeah. Oh. But, um, yeah. yeah, I've noticed I, I turn up in the index a lot, which is not unexpected. Anything else? Is there anything people can't find on the website? We, we, I mean, I don't why know don't, if we. Why don't we have a search bar? <laughs> <laughs> we'd love to have a search bar. Right. We I've have tried. It. We've I tried know. so many times, Jan. I know. I have asked the same <laughs> question so many times, yes. but I get asked it heaps. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's just, and the answer is it's not set up for it. Oh. So. Oh, and it will cost uh, a lot to do it. And yes, yes. I, I I think that's the point to actually you know let the people here know tonight is that we have looked into it many many times. We've and asked we'd love our to have it. yeah we've asked mm -hmm. our you know computer guys so many times, but they believe that the way our content is recorded on the website. It will cost us so much money that it's not worth it. Hmm. And, and I still think and, it wouldn't be effective. Yeah. And so Jan's hmm. on the on the front page of the website, um, Jan has come up with a really good solution which works if you oh, want yeah. to try it. Yeah. It's a good workaround. Yeah. So that's all we could do. <laughs> yeah. I, I think a lot of it's to do with the way the um, stream have set up the website with all these modules and things and mm. so yeah it's not as easy to search it as a normal website so, yeah. yeah it is what it is yes so is other than the fact that we don't have a search which you can't find is there anything that you know because we have we have rearranged things a little bit from time to time and and actually one of the things I was gonna and talk about. I completely forgot sharing again. Uh, of course, something that is new on the website is the latest version of the Genealogist. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's got some great stories in there about people and immigrating, uh, mostly to New Zealand, but sometimes not. And one of the things I thought about was um, 
writing for the New Zealand genealogist. So when you look in the menu, you'll see there's the editor's notes, and that's more aimed at people who might want to advertise. If you want to look at what we've got for resources and writing for it, you have to come over to resources and go down to writing. Now, we are about to revamp this page because um, we're, we're getting all the people who edit and proofread the magazine <coughs> together to um, write a guide about what we'd like to see. Um, but this for the moment is just a sort of little slideshow that you can watch. Um, but we will be updating this page shortly. So all sorts of things for you to um, inspire you to write for the magazine. And the deadline for the next one is November. 17th of October. 17th of October. Get writing, people. Although, you know, if you're really nice to me, I'll give you a little bit longer. <laughs> no. You know, that, mean, that means chocolates. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, it, the deadline is the 17th of October, um, but we can give a little bit of leeway on that. If you let Melanie know that you... You might be yeah, if you it, that, yeah, yeah, if you've got an article coming and you just need a few more days to get it finalised, then yeah. Oh. I've got someone here that know, we need to if, push along. Sorry, I've got someone here beside me that we need to um, push along for an article there. <laughs> right, well, it's a re very good DNA story. Get on to it, Gordy. <laughs> yeah, and and that of course is the thing is the theme for December's issue is DNA. So. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of stories that will come out of that. Oh, we, so, we've we've already had some really interesting ones, so it's going to be an interesting magazine. Might be a bit of a bumper issue, I suspect. Hope so, yeah. Hmm. And that's the great thing about it being online is we can make it as big as we like. Yeah, <laughs> no extra cost. But um, <laughs> So, Melanie, you haven't checked out the new lint shop? That's what I'm waiting for my next trip to Auckland for is to... No, I haven't. Because you can buy it boxes of lint chocolates. And really? there's an art to filling it up for maximum capacity. Just pointing oh. it out there. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, sorry. I, if you want to you know. bribe either of us. Yeah. Or we'll you want me or shop. you want me to pay for you to come up to <laughs> to teach me how to fill a box of lint. <laughs> yeah. Mm, okay. No. Sorry. Not gonna happen. No, that's soon. right. I'm just saying if people want to bribe you. Boxes from the lint shop. If they want to bribe me, box from the lint shop. Or Chardonnay for Melanie. Oh, yes. Yeah, Chardonnay is always good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so going back to the website, Sarah, mm -hmm. there was there was a – sorry, I just – um just moving the screens around a little bit. Um. Has everyone looked at the collections lately? Have they submitted to the collections? Oops. I'll put that out there. Have you? I know I've put in a few first families forms. Yes, I I was horrified to find that none of my first families were there, so I did six. So, great job. I think they got into the last kiwi. Hmm. And and so you know, like if we look at the certificates, um, I mean, first families is really important as well. But certificates, I mean, how many certificates do you have? How many um, funeral service sheets do you have that you could actually scan and send to us to load up? This <laughs> many are coming. Oh, okay. It might, it might be quicker for you to scan them. I've, been going through the last of my dad's files so he got them he was prolific at getting certificates because um, he used to go and visit the archives and so I've scanned the ones that are my family and all the rest are hangers on mm. so I mean the, th the point I'm trying to make is we don't need the originals you mm. can scan them you can keep your originals or you can photocopy them or you know yeah um 
But or if you've got like, electronic copies, you can just forward them. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like at at the moment, like I I don't know the numbers that are going to be um, included in the December update of Kiwi yet, um, but I do know that we have over twenty five thousand um, biography entries going in. Wow. Which include engagements, marriages, actual biographies, all sorts of things. You know, we have over. 10,000 additional um, jurors lists, uh, cool. individual people on jurors lists. Uh, so anything you anything you provide to us just keeps adding and adding to all that massive knowledge that we have. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm relatively new to the NZSG. Is the process for sharing that information clear yep it should all be on our uh, website where where to send it to so if you if you're not sure send it to nzsg projects okay any yeah um any, at genealogy.org.nz um but Is yeah we context required to to submit anything a context and a context and like what oh. you're sending. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if it's a certified copy, it, it's pretty obvious what it is. Mm. Uh, if it's a registry notice or excerpt. No, no, we have this wonderful, wonderful lady who does all the indexing of anything that could possibly submitted to um, certificates collection, and she'll she'll work out straight away what it is and how it should be recorded. And yeah. is, is, is it sort of limited to New Zealand no. registry? No, no, absolutely not. Anywhere yeah. in the world. Okay. And if you, sorry, Sarah, I know this is your thing. No, if you go for it. If you go on our website and go to um, the information about so if we look at certificates, um, it actually tells you what type of records we, any type of records that we will collect and will mm -hmm. record. So here we go. Uh, so there's a long list here. <laughs> So you can see it, it doesn't include quite a a vast array of anything. Anything you can think of that might be certificate-y, we will take. And there is um, a, a fairly up-to-date gen guide on it, which talks more about the collection as well okay. and how to access and, it, how to use it, how to submit to it. And the format is basically PDF or JPEG is it? Does it matter? No, uh, no, doesn't matter. Okay. PDF preferably, but JPEG is okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and I I will put out there for for the benefit of everybody. While we have the full index on the Kiwi collection, and you can you know ask for a search, we're never actually going to attach these to the Kiwi collection because if they're New Zealand birth, death, marriage records, it's illegal for us to do that. So um, just putting it out there as to why you can't get instant access to them, why they have to come to you via email. Okay. But you can get instant access to some images and you will, oh, yeah. ne <clears throat> next year you will be getting instant access to many, many more. Yeah. We Thing have add images. Yeah, certificates, the um, team aim to get them back to you within 24 hour turnaround. Normally it's a lot less. Yeah, you guys do a great job on the certificates. It's faster than BDM. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's well, it is faster. One. It was too <laughs> fast. <laughs> <laughs> If I'm on the computer fast. at the time during the day, you'll get something back within five minutes. So. Oh, I know. Yeah, well, <laughs> I've had something within three minutes. So, oh. you know. <laughs> It's on the, um, on a lot of these 
websites like Ancestry and Find My Past, etc., there a lot of it seems to be about networking and and finding other members or other subscribers who are researching the same topics. Mm -hmm. Is there something like that in the NZGS website? We, we do have members' interests, but I don't know how mem many members have actually put their interests in, but I do know that one of our board did it to sort of see what the process was like and got somebody coming back to her within like 24 hours. So <laughs> it is one of those things, you know, it depends on who's put their interests in. Otherwise, you could ask out on MemList or um, if you've got... Uh, if your family are on the first families index, you'll get the information of who submitted that form and they may still be a member or you may be able to contact them. So yeah, we try to, we need, we need to promote members' interests a bit more to get people to, to do it. But, yeah. um, so I, I encourage you to do it and we'll encourage other people to do it. Was that question from Stephen? Yeah, it was. Yeah, where do you live, Stephen? Auckland. Sorry, missed that. Auckland. Auckland, Northland. was that? Northland. Um, so uh, the idea, uh, do you belong to the branch, local branch? Yes, I do. Yeah, so um, belonging to the local branch is a good way to connect with other members. Um, to try and find out who's, you know, who may be in the same area that's researching the other family, oh, the same family, sorry. Um, and I've had a few chance encounters like that um, with other, re, you know, other sort of family research centre, um, what do you call them? Not the librarians, but the, the people who sort of turn up to help others. The volunteers, um, but yeah. it's been pretty random, and it, it's it's been great. You know, it's been great to to have that guidance. Mm. Um, Geraldine Geraldine O'Reilly is one, um, uh, but there was another lady. Um, I'm trying to think of her name, and we we just had a sort of common heritage that you know there was there was a there was a, a level of um, overlap. Um, but I'm just wondering if there's a more structured way that uh, exists within the the NZGS, either through the website or other other means. Mm. Are you, um, Stephen? Are you new to genealogy, or is it something you've been doing for a while? Um, took about a twenty year break. <laughs> okay. But you I started <laughs> in the 1990s when mm. it was all microfilm and microfiche and that sort yep. of thing. So, so another way that we could possibly help you is, um, you know, through a mentorship through either FRC or one of our other members of NZSG um, that, you know, could maybe guide you through some of the ways that it, to help you contact people. Wait, uh, because I have been doing it for a long time. Um, hmm. I wouldn't consider myself a beginner. Right. Yeah, it is, it is one of the things we're working on. So the, the forum has been kind of a first step. And once we've got to grips with that, we are going to be broadening it out to include other things. But I mean, I would put your names on the members interest because if we encourage everybody to um, put things on the members interests, then members can connect with each other and the members interest of course is always people who are current members so um you can go and search in there um here yeah, let's let me share my screen once again and yeah. as sarah said before post something on memlist do you belong mm -hmm. to memlist you know no yeah so look at don't look even at, know what that is okay so right. go, is members interest go yeah, yeah go to get Where involved is... I think it's yes. involved. Yeah, yep. mem list. Mem list. So you just have to email our Wendy. forum yep. manager, Wendy, with your name and NZSG number and ask to join the mem list and she'll attach you to the group. So 
um, that's really easy to do. And in terms of the members' interests, you can actually search interests just to get an idea if anybody's actually out there. Um, and uh, you know, <clears throat> let's let's go something easy. Oh, Callahan's. So at the moment, there's one. And then if you know if that matches up with your information, you can click on the button and it will send a message to the member saying you've been in touch. Do you want to get in touch with them? So because we of course we can't give out their information. Um, but so you know the more you add, the the more people will find you. And I will put it in the next e kit because we're terribly, terribly bad at um, uh, promoting this when it's actually quite useful. So if you've got Smith, there's quite a lot of other people. Um, so yeah, that would be an interesting list. To, sorry? A lot of Smiths. Yeah. So, you know, that, that could be a, a great list <laughs> to work your way through. I think most people get to Smith and go, uh But some people you can see have put first names in, so it can be worthwhile doing that if you got a common name so if you want to add you can um, manage your interests so you just you know write in some information dates countries counties towns villages if you need to and um, yeah and it just instantly goes into the and, and as you can see I am also just as bad and I have not added some interests in and the thing is you can go in and edit them you know, if you manage to get back a little bit further, discover where people came from, you can add more information as you go along. But like I say, you know, it's one of those things if somebody has actually put an interest in, you might get a contact really, really fast from it. So go and have a look. Okay, date. Well, um, I'm going to start wrapping things up now. Are there any last questions or I can't find or why don't we have for our website? No? All right. Apart, well, I'm apart, gonna... apart from our webmaster, why don't we have hmm? a search engine? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's already, already done that, that one. one. Yeah. yeah. We've, we've been there, done that one. Yeah. <clears throat> So um, look, if you if you're finding if there's anything you want to uh, add onto the website, you know the Kiwi resources or the overseas resources, we're always mm. up for new content on those. If you email them to education at genealogy.org.nz, we will um, get them to Jan and to put up on the website. We're always interested in new things. So um, I'd like to thank you all for coming along. As usual, I am not going to plug the end of October's one because I'm not quite sure what it is at this moment. <laughs> I have a plan somewhere. Um, but thank you all for coming along and I hope to see you sometime when some of you turn your cameras on. But um, we will see you back next month for our monthly presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Not very elegant Thanks, watching people eat their tea, though. Yes. Sure, I'm sorry for bombarding you with questions. Hey, no, look, um, have you been to any of our Q&A sessions? Um, I may have, may have. Go, go again, because, you know, they're, they're not all the same each time. So um, just on under, uh, here, let me share my screen it's again. It's always on the events calendar. So, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, but it's under services and the courses. Yes, we have this one. So the first Tuesday of the month. So I'm trying to think what Coming up. Is it, it's the first of October, isn't it? The first Tuesday, isn't it? Yes, it's next Tuesday. So it'll be next Tuesday will be the next one. Um, and you can if you've got any questions you want to ask, it's a good place to go and Ask them, Gary's running through all sorts of things on that. Well, I'm never short of a question. <laughs> Good. Good genealogists ask lots of questions.
Absolutely. Thank mm. you very much. All right. Well, thank you for coming. Bye.